Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys, and I'm glad again to share with you a word from the Bible. But it's just about a ten minute message here from my home and my study, and it's under the title the fact that we need to recognize the difference between our soul and our spirit. It's so important because the Lord dwells in the Christian, and He dwells in us through the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ in us. And so we need to recognize that the Lord lives in us. So in Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. I live, but not me anymore. It's Christ living in me. And that's the secret of Christianity. Dear friends, we need to recognize this is the power we need. Someone has said it's, it's Christ in unity and Christ in meity. That's Christianity. <laughs> and it's important to know that Christ is in us, the hope of glory. But we need to realize that there is a change and a miracle that takes place in our lives when we become Christians. And that miracle is the fact that God gives us a new spirit, a new heart. And then in that spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in, the Spirit of Christ comes in to dwell with us. And we become new creatures in Christ, and therefore we can say with Paul, Christ lives in me. The Bible says in uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 12, For the Word of God is alive, and it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides asunder the soul and the spirit. And so you see there is a difference between the soul and the spirit in us because we need to recognize that the Word of God divides the soul and the spirit so they're not the same. And so we, we, we realize that when we're lost in sin without a Savior, we don't really have an active spirit. It died in Adam and Eve when they sinned against God. And everybody born in this world is born with just a soul and a body. They do not have an active spirit in here because that's where God dwells and that's where he dwelt in Adam and Eve. And when they sinned against him, their spirit died and God left them. And so people without, without Christ are without God and they are without hope because there is no spirit in here for God to dwell. Now, the Word of God teaches us that we're to obey the Lord and believe in Jesus Christ. And when we do, the Lord comes in. And when He comes in, He gives us a new spirit and a new heart. And when we have that new spirit, the Spirit of Christ dwells in us. The Holy Spirit lives in our spirit. And we become Christians. Over in the book of Romans, we read these words. For there be, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's an enemy to God. It does not, uh, it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be, nor can it be. And so it's important to see that the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when we're saved, His Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, bears witness with our spirit that we are God's children. And so you have to have a spirit. Now, when people are saved and born again, the soul, the, the, they've given them a new spirit. But that spirit is closely uh, um, enmeshed with the soul. And so it's a carnal Christian. It's a baby Christian. He's still used to looking for the things of the world. He's still used to depending on himself. But see, he's got to learn that that soul and spirit must be divided and that the spirit must take jurisdiction over the soul. The soul is your mind, it's your will, doing what you want to do, it's your emotions, how you feel about things. All of this, is everybody's born with these qualities. But the Holy Spirit comes in, gives us a new spirit, and the spirit is where God dwells, and he has supervision over the soul. And when that happens, then you begin to live a Christian life, and you find the will of God, and you know the strength He gives, and the peace of God becomes real, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you go on, and you go on because you can't stop. You love God and you love your neighbor because you're allowing the Spirit of God to, to rule in your, your spirit 
and your spirit is ruling over your mind and your emotions and your will. And I hope you can see this. And I hope you can understand that this is the way Christ lives in His people. He lives in us. And He wants to live in you like that. Let Him come into your life. Let Him take over your life. Let Him become your God, your Lord, your strength. And then as He said in Psalm 50 way, 58, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And give me, <coughs> excuse me, give me a new spirit, Lord. And God will do it. He'll do it for you. Pray a prayer like this with me. I mean it, a very short prayer. Just mean it. Pray it out loud. Say, Dear God, I believe in Jesus. Come in my heart. Help me live for you. Give me a new heart. Give me a new spirit. And then fill me with your spirit. And I shall walk. And I shall live. And yet it will not be me, but Christ living in me. This is very important. I want you to know that and know and recognize it, that it's the truth of the ages. And it's a truth that I want you to understand. That God lives in you. And He's able to help you overcome. Because the truth is found over in 1 John, in the 4th chapter, verse 4. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome the world, because greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world. Now, who is in the world? The world is, is, is dominated by Satan and dominated by evil spirits that we cannot see. But it's dominated by unbelief. It's dominated by people that are not Christians. It's the world out there of unbelief. A world of unbelievers. They live because they feel like everything depends on them. And they're not looking to God. And therefore, they're against the Christians. And they're against the things of the Bible. They oppose the things of the church of the living God. And we need to see that the Holy Spirit is with the Christian, standing here against the evil and unbelief of the world. But the Bible said, Fear not, little children, because greater is he that's in you than he that's out there in the world. He that's in you is the Lord your God. There's no one greater than he is. And he's in you. He's in your life. He wants to give you the peace and the power that's His to give and yours to receive. Open your heart and let Him come in. Oh, praise the Lord. Let Jesus be the Lord of your life. And He'll change your life. And He'll give you a song. And you can sing. You can sing. Hallelujah. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth that royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. I would that you would crown him Lord of all in your life. He loves you very much. He calls you now to trust him. He calls you now to come and walk with Him by faith as best you can. He calls you to come and learn of Him. Read your Bible. Spend some time in prayer every day. Look to God and live by faith. And you will find victory. Because greater is He that's in you than He that's in this world. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen and Amen.